like, comment, share, and subscribe. Pause the video right now to check out my social media, my radio show, and that drummerguy.com. And most of all, enjoy the following presentation. Hi, how's it going? Good. Ah, cool. Well, uh, thank you very much for uh, taking the time to be able to do this interview. Yeah, no problem, man. Oh, well, awesome. Well, of course, uh, we are here to talk about uh, the brand new EP from Scour Red, which is available now through Housecore Records. Uh, with uh, the release coming out last week, what has been the reception to the new EP so far? Uh, it's been awesome, actually. Um, I'm on tour right now with my band, Cattle Decapitation, and literally every night I have a, a, like multiple people come up talking about it, so uh, I can't ask for anything more than that. I've seen online, I haven't seen hardly any negative feedback, so pretty stoked. Oh, that's awesome. So, um, how hard was it being able to do a follow-up to that EP? Um, it was actually incredibly easy. <laughs> um, we were obviously stoked for the, uh, the response to the gray. And then I had already had, by the time the gray came out, I already had like more than half the EP written. Um, so I was like, well, if they have things they like it, so just keep doing what I'm going to do. And it was actually, this process was actually even easier than the first one, to be honest. Well, that's actually really great to hear too. I mean, especially when you find the right group of people to be able to write music with. And you know, it's like when you get one release down and then the fact that it actually does get easier from that point. I mean, when you have like these, a uh, back catalog of riffs that you can be using and everything and with it going smoother the second time around i mean that's awesome to hear yeah i know that the like sophomore release is like you know kind of a make it or break for a lot of bands sometimes uh so there was kind of that pressure in the back of our heads but you know it wasn't kind of just said you know just stick to our guns do what we want to do and ultimately it turned out really well i think so with, with that said, I mean, when uh, you already had like a riffs in mind for uh, this release, I mean, is there anything that's like uh, lined up now for like the next release or are you just uh, letting things come as they go? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, I've already got full songs finished uh, and more in the works. Um, I'm on tour right now, so I, I can't record on the road. I could, it'd just be you know, kind of rough. But uh, yeah, we've already got material lined up for the next release. It's just um, it's just a matter of getting it done, you know? Oh, that's that's so great to hear. I mean, that what I really appreciate the bound, uh, about the band is that it does feel so very fresh and inspired, and it's great to see, uh, even though there's a year in between uh, the EP releases, that it, it still continues to feel that fresh and inspired, and I imagine that's going to be continuing on with upcoming releases as well. well that's awesome, yeah. We, um, it's funny, like, I had most of the songs, like, for this one, written, like, a year previous. So probably we'll have the, the next batch, whatever, finished a long time before it comes out. Of course, you know, the, how it goes. But uh, yeah, it, it seems like the process is super easy. We kind of have a, I do all the writing for like the music and I have like a very direct, uh, I don't know, I have like direct goals in mind that I want to achieve. And so it just makes it a lot easier when you just go that route. So. And luckily nobody's been putting up a fight for what I've been writing. So <laughs> keep going with it. Yeah, and that, I mean, that always helps, too. I mean, yeah, I mean that's the, what is so great about, like, this lineup and everything is that there's I, I don't hear any egos or uh, drama at the door or anything. I mean, it's just a group of collection of guys uh, getting together and just writing some awesome black metal, and it's really great to be able to hear that. Oh, cool. Yeah, I mean, that, a big part of the band was, uh, you know, it was just uh, it was supposed to be a little small project, a little side project, though. I wanted to enlist all my friends. You know, I've known the Jarvis cousins for 20 years or whatever, and um, you know when we got Phil involved, uh, he ended up becoming a good friend of mine as well. And they kind of brought it to a new level, though, of course. You know, no pun intended, I guess. And, uh, <laughs> but it's still keeping the same core principles of Scour. You know, just good buddies, good times. You know, we're not trying to out tech anybody. Cause we're all in these like death metal bands and they play all the techie stuff, which is awesome. I love it for death. You know, but uh, just want to do something simple and easy, but extremely brutal at the same time. And, uh, that really helps when you're in a, a good group of guys. And I, like I said, I'm honestly surprised. Like even Phil hasn't like been like, I want you to change this part or anything. And then same goes for him when he sends us the the lyrics and the vocals back. It's like we don't want to change anything. It's like sounds great. Yeah, and that's when you know you got something like really great in the mix. I mean, it's one thing to be able to be in with a group of musicians and you're able to make one kind of release and have that kind of magic and power behind it. But, you know, a lot of times in the music industry, there can be some like a clashing of ideas or something like that. But the fact that you guys are able to get along so very well and be able to just like write in this style, being able to uh, uh, do some awesome shows over the past year since the release of the first EP and, you know, just really getting your guys' name out there and just having fun with it i mean that's just so important yeah it really is uh it's kind of like the main principle of the band honestly i 
I started this. Me and John Jarvis put this together. Um, he was tour managing for Cattle when we were on tour with Cannibal Corpse. And uh, we were just talking about, yeah, we I got these songs that don't really fit. Cattle, you know, we kind of just want to do something. So we started just in, uh, bringing in our friends. And uh, yeah, one of the main principles is to do everything smart, do everything, make sure everybody's having a good time. And, you know, make sure it riffs. So. Yeah, and you know, just like uh, you touched on a little bit ago, you know, just like with uh, everyone being a part of like a, these uh, great tech death bands and just being able to show off everything that they can do uh, through their instruments. I mean, it is based to guitar in this uh, situation, being able to like uh, show off different riffs in that style. I mean, that's going to be really rewarding as a musician to be able to go from different styles and have that inspiration still be there. Yeah, it definitely is. Um, and like you said, when I switched to guitar, uh, it's a an- huge different uh for me especially in the live setting like i do all, all my writing even like for cattle decapitation mostly on guitar so you know i'm used to playing it but when you get into the live setting like i had to hit up my my buddy mark misery index to help me out like set up my live rig and all this stuff like i didn't even know like a lot of that stuff i don't even know like bass i got dialed in the car's a whole new world um but it is refreshing you know it's these riffs are not super challenging, you know. They're as intense as, like, more stamina style, but uh, it is refreshing just to play easier music uh, than, than super tech death, you know. Yeah, and it's, you know, it's, uh, of course, with uh, writing what you do in cattle, I mean, obviously, with the chops being there and everything, I mean, it, you know, just like, even if it's just mentally, you know, just like uh, being able to do something that's uh, more laid back, even though with the tempo is still obviously being up there, but, you know, just like not focusing so much on the fret work and just being able to write some good songs. I mean, whether that's in cattle or scour or any of the other projects that you're part of, I mean, the fact that you're able to adapt and have that inspiration be there, I mean, it's great to be in that position. Yeah, it is a, good, a great position to be in, you know. Um, for me, personally, too, another thing about, like, the style, it's like there's nothing more intense for me than just, like, writing out one note or one chord with, like, a split blast drum beat behind it. Um, I had a project with James King from Immersible back in the day, and it was just like that. And uh, I, I personally just can't get enough of it. And even though it's easier, like, you know, just one or two notes, it's, for me, it's just the most powerful type of, I don't know, extreme metal you could play so it's fun uh, to do that and a lot of some of that creeps into cattle music the last couple albums too as well we've had some of those that style of stuff um but we'll see what happens with the next record yeah. yeah, and I actually wanted to touch on that, too. You know, it's just like with the the last uh, few Kettle albums. I mean, I just, I really appreciate the diversity that's really going on there. And just like you were talking about, like uh, having some more of those kind of minimal riffs in there. Because, you know, just with the fact that it can be so brutal when you put it in such a way, just like you've described with uh, other projects. I mean, when you're able to do that and then you get into more of the technical aspects, it makes those parts stand out a little bit more. Yeah, I definitely agree. Um, and this also kind of comes with having uh, a good drummer. Uh, I've been blessed, I guess you could say, in my life to jam with some of the best death metal drummers out there. And to play that style with the writing notes, you got to have a, a rip and blast beat behind it uh, to really get the, the vibe across. But uh, it's cool. Yeah, I did. You know, I came in cattle a couple years, uh, a couple albums ago, and uh, it was cool to, you know, add my, my type of stuff to the music and kind of give it its own new identity, if you will. And uh, the cattle writing is way different than... Scour, scour, I, I just, you know, rip out these songs. And Cattle is, is more of a very, you know, all of us in a room beating each other up, you know, <laughs> you know, just going over. But I think the end result is what makes it so unique and cool, you know. And, uh, of course, I... Uh... Uh, you mentioned just a little bit ago uh, in the beginning of this uh, that you actually are on the road of uh, finishing up a headlining run with cattle. How has this uh, current run been going for you guys? Uh, this tour has been awesome. Um, we're with uh, Artificial Brain, Full of Hell, and Revocation. Um, all of them are great guys, stellar musicians. Uh, and it's just been a great tour. We've had a bunch of sold-out shows. Um, it's been, uh, yeah, like I remember we played the Opera House. I, remember, I played there like 11 years ago as the opening band. And we came out as the headliner to the Pax House. Uh, it was really cool to see. Tonight is the only exception. It's kind of weird because we're supposed to play in San Antonio tonight, but the venue shut down. I don't know what was going on with that. So we were lucky. We picked up um, just a show at Tomcats West here in Fort Worth, Texas. And it's just a total just last minute show. Like we set it up literally last night. So uh, we'll see how it goes tonight. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, that's great. I mean, it's it's awesome to see that you guys were able to be in that position to be able to, to fill out the show. I mean, it I've seen that happen so many times with uh, bands and like uh, the venues closing without their knowledge or uh, sometimes they double book a show and they don't tell the other bands. And, you know, it's just like there's a lot of variables that can definitely go on with being on tour. And the fact that you guys were able to find a venue in such a short amount of time and, you know, I'm not sure going to be playing an amazing show tonight. I mean, that's so great to be able to see that. Yeah, we're really fortunate to get something, uh, you know, to, uh, a whole tour pack. It's not just one band, you know, like four bands. And, you know, I think it was just doing it on a door deal basis. So, you know, it's like, hey, anything's better than nothing. I heard something like they had like 30 pre-sales or something already. So it's like, hey, even if those, just those 30 kids come out, you know, we'll still make a show. It'll still be a rager. So we're fortunate to get something so last minute. Um, I heard the last or the other venue didn't even have like power on for like two weeks or something. So it's just a mess down there. Oh, wow. Yeah, I mean, again, uh, thankfully, I mean, the fact that there was a venue that would be able to accommodate a tour like this, and, you know, it's like already getting, like, the pre-sales and everything, and, of course, with the uh, the word being spread around social media and everything, I mean, I even if it is, ends up being more of an intimate show, I mean, it's going to be a killer show. Oh, yeah, show must go on, you know, regardless. <laughs> And, and speaking of that, uh, what is it like for you guys? I mean, when uh, you guys are a part of like uh, these tour packages, whether you're headlining or you're a part of something like Summer Slaughter or something, how does things change when, uh, depending on how you're on the bill? Um, a lot of changes, actually, I guess. Um, headlining, nobody likes to headline, I don't think. Um, but there's like positives and negatives for both. I mean, headlining, you know, you get a little more comfort you know we get a sound check every night you know i get set up my like, my base rig in the corner you know my little setup um you know and, you know a lot of fans are there to see you you're the headliner um but you know direct support the headliner is like the pre primo spot you know you get done early uh you have time to hang out with your friends because a lot of times when you're headlining your friends will come out you know and they want to see you and at like eight o'clock they're ready to hang out you can't really just start chugging whiskey you know if you got to go on in three hours so you kind of just have to hang around, and then when you're done playing, it's like you know midnight or after that, and everyone's got to go to work the next day. So like oh, I got to leave. So by the time you're cleaned up and broken down, it's like you know one, two in the morning. Nobody's around, so it, it's different. But I mean, I'm fortunate to be in the headlining spot. I, I can't complain at all. You know about stuff like that. Oh yeah, and that totally makes sense too. I mean, there's like uh, great positives and negatives that go into both sides. I mean, uh, I I know from uh, like local scenes when you're the last band playing that night, yeah, you see the crowds leaving like midway through your set, and you, you know it's just like uh, there's everyone's so tired after like uh, band after band after band. But you know, thankfully with being in a position like Cattle, you know, it's like so many people are coming out uh, just to see you guys, and then uh, being uh, open to seeing uh, new bands that they possibly haven't heard of yet or maybe have heard of but never actually checked out and that was, that's what's so great about like this kind of bill I mean it's like it's four great metal bands but it's all like in different differencing styles and you know it's just like it makes for a great night yeah it really is like I, I even for me I didn't check out some of these bands until like you know on day one that we did obviously we've played with Revocation a bunch of times but I haven't seen Artificial Brain or Full of Hell yet those guys rip and uh, it's cool they bring their own crowd and you know, we all drive together and uh, we haven't really seen any like walkouts either like towards the end of the night which is really cool and we play a long set like an hour and 20 minutes or something and that's a long for cattle decapitation music which is like fucking lifting your face for a long time <laughs> like dying penis does that all the time i don't know how they do it but um yeah we haven't seen any well there was maybe one show where some people left early because it was like we didn't go on so super late for some reason but uh yeah it's been great people have been sticking around and like you said it's such a cool package that you know it's worth people to get there early and stay the whole time and, and how was that for you? I mean, with obviously with the amount of talent and, uh, you know, the musicianship that really goes in the kettle, how does it feel to be able to play such a long set like that? Um, you know, we were, it was like first couple shows was like, you know, a little challenging, but after you get into the zone, we've been doing this, you know, we've been on two over five weeks, so it's just like, you know, clockwork now. Um, it's cool. We do this, uh, we play the monolith, uh, which is like a, Travis comes out and sings. Uh, without the band just do like the sample track and that gives us like you know just like a two minute break or something but even that is like just enough to keep get recharged and go back at it and actually adds a really cool dynamic to our set too so it's not just you know gravity blast in your face for two hours or whatever oh absolutely and with that in mind i mean um uh, every time that i've been able to see you guys i mean either it was a uh, where you guys were in a support slot or uh being a part of something like summer slaughter uh how do you go about the set list when it comes into a headlining tour like this 
Uh, well, it could be a lot longer for sure. I mean, summer slaughter, I mean, I think there's one tour where we had like 20 minutes or something. So that was rough. You know, you drive eight hours, get up there and play 20 minutes. But, um, yeah, it was, you know, we, it, we got to craft it. You know, we were trying to focus heavily on the last couple records and then trying to, you just got to, you know, play the songs that we feel go over best and that people, you know, have been shouting out for. Uh, but you got to make sure that the set flows together well. Um, so we started out with a, a giant set and maybe take a couple out, switch a song or two, switch a sample. So uh, it took a little bit of crafting, but now that we're here five weeks later, I mean, it's pretty much dialed in. And, you know, we do some encore. We'll, we'll mix it up a little bit. You know? Oh, very cool. So um, with all this said, I mean, with uh, being a part of such uh, awesome bands and projects and being able to tour as much as you have, especially within the last couple of years, what's on the agenda for 2018? Um, well, cattle, we're going to, we do have some tours. Uh, I think we're trying to set up Australia. We've got a show in South Africa, uh, Johannesburg. That's, we're all really stoked for that. Um, we have some others, maybe two offers, but it's going to be mainly focused on writing because uh, we're trying to get a new record out and we all got some killer ideas. So it's going to be predominantly writing with some some shows going on next year. Oh, very cool. Yeah, I mean, with uh, with how amazingly well and well received that the last uh, Cattle album is going, I mean, I've been uh, so very excited to see where the band's going to be going from here. So the fact that you guys are going to be uh, in more of a writing mode next year, I mean, that makes me very excited as a fan. Oh, cool. Yeah. Um, we have, we introduced like a year ago uh, second live guitarist. Uh, which totally adds a dynamic to our sound. So I think we're going to really be keeping that in mind uh, when we're writing, for writing for like two guitar parts. So it would be like super heavy, super full, dance around with some melodies and like kind of go into new areas that we haven't really gone into before. So uh, I know that a big thing, <laughs> I kept seeing this everywhere when the last album came out that people were, it was like, yeah, it's good, but they didn't reinvent the wheel. It's like, well, hey, man, well, <laughs> They're trying to write some good songs, you know, but we yeah. actually, we're not co like consciously like doing it for that reason, but we, now that we have this extra guitar, a whole nother tool, we are going to use it um, and kind of go into new territories, I guess. Oh yeah. And it, it's funny you bring that up because I, I did see that as well, but you know, it's just like you said, it's like, I care so much more about like hearing a, a collection of good music and good songs. I mean, not every album has to reinvent the wheel or uh, come up with something completely different. I, I want something something that's just really solid and make something to make those songs stand out and that's what I really appreciate about the last few cattle albums because it's like I can tell what the different songs are I mean there's always something that's like when I hear a song title it makes me go back to a certain part or something like that and of course uh, with going live and you know like having an additional uh, guitar at the disposal now for the songwriting I mean I can't wait to see what you guys do next with that cool man yeah we're pretty excited about it actually um you know, I've, when I joined the band, the uh, songwriting was like the biggest, one of the biggest things I contributed, I think, just kind of, uh, and the same with Scour, too, is, but it's all focused on, like, the songwriting. It's not so much how fast you can rip or anything like that. Uh, and, you know, we're a death metal, so it's inherently going to be technical. It's going to have it, its stuff. So we're not really trying to show off. There's a lot of bands out there that are like, how fast can you go? And it's like, it's not a competition for us, even though <laughs> Dave, our drummer, is extremely fast. Um, but it's not, you know, it's really emphasis on songwriting and so we're just trying to perfect that craft, you know, and we're just going to continue with the next record. Yeah, and that's all I really want. I mean, I just want to make sure that uh, everyone that's uh, making an album is happy to be making that album. You know, like the songwriting is going to be there and it's inspired. And, you know, it's and also to have it translate live as well. Because, I mean, when you're in this position and you get to go out for a few years and promoting an album, I mean, you want to be able to be sure to be proud of the music you're making and making sure that the fans have a reason to go out and see it live. So I know you guys are definitely doing that in all the right aspects. Oh, thanks, Ben. Yeah, we, uh, keeping the live aspect is definitely always in our mind when we're writing, you know, like, how is this going to translate live, you know? Sometimes we'll add a group, then we'll slow it down or something, just, you know, because people can't just be blasted forever, you know? Not that our drummer wants to do that either, but, uh, yeah, we definitely keep the live setting in mind when we're writing, you know? And not, not so much just, like, what do people want to hear, but just how is it going to translate? Oh, very much so. Uh, so, uh, also with that in mind, I mean, with uh, uh, the talks of, like, uh, potential stuff going on with Cattle for next year, um, and obviously with some uh, uh, riffs in mind for the next Scour album, is there uh, anything coming up in 2018 as far as uh, more Scour shows? Yes. Um, we just announced uh, that we're playing Roskilde Fest in Denmark. Um, that's in July. 
Oh, nice. And we may try to do some stuff like around that warm-up show, maybe something in the U.S., maybe something in Europe. Uh, that's still got to be figured out. Um, but, yeah, we, we do have that one, and then we have some other offers that we kind of need to discuss. As long as the timing's right, draw like 100 bands. So, you know, we got to go down the line, you know, who's busy doing what, does it make sense? Uh, but we do have some offers, and I think we are going to do some, some more live stuff. Oh, that's, that's so great to hear. You know, it's like when I first heard about uh, the project last year, you know, it's like, I, I know everyone involved in the band is like so busy with other uh, projects and life in general. And the fact that you guys are able to get together, even if it is just like for like one-off shows or mini tours or whatever the case is and will be. I mean, the fact that you guys are able to get together and pull off some live shows. I mean, that's so cool. Yeah. I mean, I love playing Scour Live. It's fucking awesome. And we, um, it is a it's a it's a battle, you know, to, to figure out when you can do it. Uh, we've had some like tour stuff, you know, like a full tour, but you know, at the time, Phil wasn't feeling it uh, for different reasons, and uh, there probably will be a full tour at some point. But for now, we're just gonna kind of, I don't get in where you fit in, type of deal, I guess. Oh yeah, and that totally makes sense. I mean, you know, again, with like, especially with how busy you are, and with all the touring that you've been able to do with cattle uh, to promote uh, the. Oh, the last album, you know, which is a couple years old now. I mean, the, the fact that you are able to get out and being able to tour like this and, you know, uh, spread your wings in other projects as well. I mean, you know, it's like it's so hard to be able to be able to pull all of that off, off successfully, especially in 2017. And the fact that you are able to do that in so many different styles and being able to keep that integrity and inspiration going. I mean, it's very inspiring. Oh, thanks, man. You know. We do it because we have to, because we can't just sit at home for very long. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, very true. But, you know, it's just like a lot of times with that, I mean, it can come with like a, a very uh, rehashed ideas or something like that. But I, I haven't gotten that from like the last few uh, cattle albums that you've been a part of. I haven't gotten that from Scour. You know, it's just like it feels very fresh and inspired, whether it comes to the bass or guitar or whatever you contribute to a project. And it's, it's so awesome to see that. Well, and speaking of that, uh, probably should wrap this up. Uh, thank you very much for uh, taking the time to be able to talk to me about uh, everything that's going on in your world right now. I'm uh, finishing up an awesome tour like this with Cattle, being able to talk about the brand new EP from Scour Red, which is available now through Housecore Records, and you know everything that you got coming up in the next year uh, between both bands and anything else that might happen in 2018. I mean, it was great to be able to talk about all of that and being able to show everything off as well. Oh yeah, thanks for having me, man. You know, I'm always, always love talking about uh, Scour and Cattle, for sure. Oh, well, awesome. Uh, before we wrap things up here, is there anything else you'd like to mention that I hadn't brought up yet? Um, there's one thing uh, that's very new, and I can't talk much about it, but I got a group of uh, metal musicians that are about to put out some kind of a cool site together um, that's going to be focused on all the positive cool things about metal. I can't go too much more into it, but it's going to be a really cool thing uh, that as soon as it's out there, we'll be hyping like crazy. So keep your eyes out for that. I can't really talk much about it, but there is a very cool thing coming out soon. Not a band, just like a, just like a collaboration site type thing. Hard to describe, <laughs> but keep your eyes out for it. I'll be hyping it for sure. Oh, awesome. Yeah, I'll definitely be on the lookout for that. I mean, uh, with with what you just described, I mean, uh, being able to have some more uh, positivity that's going on into the metal world, I mean, whatever it it ends up being, I mean, I'm going to be very excited to be able to check that out. Yeah, it's not going to be any hater shit, uh, nobody's opinion. It's just going to be some cool stuff just for the love of metal, for the love of the scene. So when I have more details, I'll definitely be able to share. <laughs> <laughs>